Hi everybody, in this video we're looking at chromosomes and the cell cycle. So we're going to look at the structure of the chromosomes and just an overview of the cell cycle and how the chromosomes change um, at various points. So when you think about a chromosome, you probably think of something like this. So this is an actual uh, microscope image of a chromosome. So we've got this sort of classic X shape. And this is actually two DNA molecules because um, the DNA at this point has already replicated itself, which is what has to happen if a cell and the nucleus of the cell is going to divide. So what we can see is this structure here, which is a chromatid. Now this is one DNA molecule, okay? And that DNA molecule is coiled and coiled and coiled and coiled and coiled. And then we've got um, oh, and it's made of something called chromatin. Okay, so the DNA um, is there and it's also got proteins and together the DNA and proteins are called chromatin and we'll look at that in more detail in a second. So this chromatid um, has actually got then a sister. So what we've got here is a chromosome made of two sister chromatids. So this is one molecule of DNA and the sister chromatid is an identical molecule of DNA. Now, those two sister chromatids are joined by this structure here, which is called a centromere. Okay, so the centromere joins two sister chromatids together. And then the other part of the chromosome that we need to know about is at the end of each chromatid, and it's called a telomere. So each chromatid has got one telomere at one end of the DNA and another telomere at the other end. And the telomere is just a section of the DNA, DNA which has a repeating sequence of bases. So the same sequence of bases over and over and over again. And that's there to protect the rest of the DNA um, from being degraded during cell division. So every time a cell divides, the chromosomes have to replicate themselves. And when that happens, uh, just because of the way that the enzymes involved in that replication, it's just the, it, the way that they work, they can't get to the very end of the DNA. So at the very, very end of the DNA molecule, there is a small section of bases that cannot be replicated, and that little section will be lost from the chromosome. So basically, each time the, the, the cell divides and the chromosomes replicate, the chromosomes are going to get shorter and shorter and shorter, just by a little bit each time. The importance of the telomeres is that this uh, repeating sequence of the telomeres does not code for any protein. So when a small section at the end of the telomere is lost each time the chromosome replicates, because it doesn't code for a protein, it makes no difference to the functioning of the cell. So that's what the telomeres do. They, they are protective. Okay, if we look at the structure of chromatin then in a bit more detail. So here we've got our DNA. OK, so here's our double helix structure. This is the DNA molecule. But that DNA um, isn't just free like this. The DNA actually wraps around uh, these small proteins here, which are called histone proteins. So the DNA is very, very, very highly coiled around these histone proteins. Um, and as you can see, we've got a group of histone proteins here. There are eight of them. And when we've got that group of eight histone proteins, um, it's actually then called a nucleosome. So nucleosomes, which are made up of histone proteins. So the DNA is highly coiled around these uh, histone proteins or these nucleosomes um, until we end up with our chromosome structure. And the chromatin, by, by having the DNA coiled around the proteins in this way, it just means that a far greater quantity of DNA is able to be packaged into a very small space. Okay, so let's think now about the cell cycle. So again, this is just a, a very um, sort of much an overview of the cell cycle, but thinking about what the chromatin is like um, at each stage. So if we have a cell here now, uh, there are various reasons that might mean this cell needs to divide. So in some organisms, if this is our organism, then maybe it's going to reproduce, uh, maybe there's some kind of asexual reproduction taking place. And so cells need to divide um, for that reason. 
It could be because uh, cells have been damaged, so they need to be replaced. Um, tissues need to be repaired. So if this cell is going to uh, replicate itself, then the nucleus has got to replicate itself as well. So whatever DNA in here is in here, we need an identical copy of it. So that's the first thing that has to happen. The nucleus has to uh, replicate itself and the DNA within it. We then have to separate those two nuclei so that we end up with two cells and each cell has got a nucleus within it. Once that's happened, then each cell is going to have to grow because you can see that this cell here is much smaller than our original cell. The phase where um, cell division is not taking place is called interphase. So this is going to usually be the vast majority of a cell's life will be spent in interphase. So regular um, metabolic reactions are taking place, chemical reactions, uh, the cell might be growing as well. When a cell divides, that is known as mitosis. Okay, We do also, of course, have meiosis, which is the, uh, the division that takes place in gametes, but we're just looking at mitosis for now. The process of actually separating the two new cells is called cytokinesis. And then once we've got our new cell, that new cell is then going to enter back into interphase. Okay, so that includes growth, it includes the synthesis of new organelles, and then it just includes the, the regular um, functioning of the cell. During interphase, the chromatin is uncondensed. So that means it's not quite as uh, tightly coiled, and so the chromosomes are sort of quite long and thin, and they're not visible as individual chromosomes if we look at them down the microscope. So over here, which is also interphase, then we've got chromatin um, in its uncondensed form. When a cell enters mitosis, that chromatin condenses. So it becomes much more tightly coiled. The chromatids um, or the chromosomes get shorter and thicker, and it means that we can actually see them. Um, so if you look here, we can now see, uh, it's very small, but we can now see sort of individual chromosin chromosomes sorry uh, within the cell so it's now condensed as the cell then goes through into cytokinesis the chromatin becomes uncondensed again so depending on what stage of the cell cycle a cell is in if you look at it down a microscope you would see the uh, the chromosomes and the chromatin would look very different At this stage here in interphase, that's when the chromosomes duplicate and we end up with two sister chromatids um, joined to begin with by that centromere. Okay, so here's an example of um, looking at cells down a microscope. So in order to be able to see the chromatin at all, you have to stain the cells. Once you stain them, then you can see uh, the chromatin there. If you have a look at uh, these two cells, we can see that they must be in interphase because although we can see the chromatin, um, we've got this dark stained area, you can't actually make out any individual chromosomes and that's because the chromatin is uncondensed. However, in these two cells, we can actually see the individual chromosomes. So those two cells are in mitosis. Um, they haven't undergone cytokinesis yet. Okay, we can see that it's still one cell. Um, this cell here, the chromosomes are starting to separate out to form um, eventually two nuclei. So these are two different stages of mitosis, and we'll look at the different stages of mitosis in another video. But the important point is that we can see the chromosomes um, much more clearly because the chromatin has condensed. Okay, that's all. Thank you.